Josh. Hey, Brad. Hey, how are I you? Question. I'm great. So I got approved for my permanent resident card, but then it came and the date on it is saying that I've been a resident since 2017, and I just got approved February 28, 2018. So the date is incorrect. How do you know you got I'm approved? Left. How do you know you got approved February 2018 and the date's incorrect? Because um, my adjustment, my paperwork was sent in August 2017. Okay. But how do you know? In other words, maybe the approval notice is incorrect and they approved you in December. I mean, you don't know what's correct. Right? But it's saying I just went in February 28, 2018. Right. And my adjustment was August 2017. Oh, your the adjustment. The, oh, your adjustment. You went in for the interview in August 2017. No, Wait, I went in for the interview on the so February again. 28, 2018. Oh, you went for the interview February 2018. Yes. Okay, and and and, was, and the card is says that it, you've been a resident since December 2017. No, it's saying since February 28, 2017. Since February 28th, 2017. Oh, so it's off a year. Yes. I understand. And All right. So, it so, so, it's a, yeah, so it's a, it's a typographical error. Um, in the computer system, you are 2018, I promise you. Okay. Um, what mm -hmm. you may want to do, just so you have a proper card, is file an I-90. There's a little checkbox that says, I got the card was sent to me uh, with incorrect information. You shouldn't have to pay a new filing fee. Uh, but you would have to return the card, get a new stamp in your passport, and they'll mail you a new card with the with the right with the right uh, date on it. But you are a permanent resident of the United States. That's the most important thing. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five one eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. Tell a friend to tell a friend. This is the time to call Brad. Get your immigration questions asked and answered. I can't even begin to tell you. I met with three different people today. All screwed up cases. Even one kid, one, you know, even one, one case where the mom was given wrong advice by an immigration consultant and said, as long as your uh, husband files for your son before he's 21, um, he's eligible for a green card. The thing the, con the consultant left off was is that the marriage to the mother had to happen before the son turned 18. It happened one week after the son turned 18, and they had a long engagement, only because she got very bad advice. And now the son, after years and years trying, he's now 22, didn't get his green card. And there was like mass hysteria in, 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 in the office, and rightfully so, because she got, this woman got bad advice from a consultant. There is such bad advice, and, and I heard two other stories, horrific stories about bad advice. I am telling you, okay? I am telling you, there's good advice here. Tell your friends, call right now. one 529 let us go to Veronica in Atherton, California. Where's Atherton, California, Veronica? It's near San Francisco. Near San Francisco. I just read, yeah. I just read an article that San Francisco, mm -hmm. I didn't even know this, has the highest real estate rents in America. Yes. Yeah, right? True, but I yeah. don't live there. You don't live there. Yeah, I don't live. Right, no, you're smart. I just, I'm just on our job. Yeah, <laughs> right. I work. I live in I live in Staten Island, New York. Oh, you lived in Staten Island, New York, but now you're I'm in Atherton. I'm on Atherton. a job here. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah, I'm, I'm see. on a job here. I see. So I'm going home next I month. See. But okay. Yes, I call. I, oh, Brad, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, sorry to hear that you were sick. Uh, I, it was, it was I, misery. I, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But it, I'm back. Oh, I'm good goodness. now. But thank you. Yes, but you're telling us people to take the the flu shot. I don't take it, and I don't get flu. Well, <laughs> I, I, I I want you to know something. I yes. will be taking it every year. I never want to feel like that again. I don't care. I don't, you know what? If, if I, if this thing kills me, you know, the flu shot, they say, oh, it's not bad for you. You know, it can kill you later on in life. You know what? If mm -hmm. I, if it takes a year off my life, but I don't get the flu ever again, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right. That's my two cents okay, on it. Okay. All right. All okay. right. So That's what's going on? Okay. Okay. So what's yes. going on? I, um, yes, I did my, um, uh, the affidavit of support for my, my 
three kids, my three, my grandson, my two kids, and myself four. But my um, my tax was short by by a thousand twelve hundred. Wait, wait, wait. Um, you did I mean, an affidavit I mean, 1, of support. 000. One second. You're doing an yeah. affidavit yeah. of support. Who? You're getting a green card, or you're sponsoring your family? I'm sponsoring my family. Okay, so fine. I, so I you're, did the, you're, I did the you're sponsoring for, your children. Yes, and my grandson. Okay, so, so how many how many the, people besides you are you sponsoring? Three. 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 Okay, and how much money are, are you willing to share? How much what your income is? Sure, sure. It was twenty nine one hundred. Okay, twenty nine so thousand one hundred. So that's not enough. Money. Yes, and right. so I need thirty. I went online. I looked, looked it up. I need thirty thousand um, seven hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. But um, but they sent back and said my son. One of them need. I need to do a affidavit of support for him. Mm -hmm. So um, and I, I I own a house in 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 um, Staten Island, right? And I and I have my bank account, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, can I use my bank account and my real estate, my my house? You to can, do the, you the, can, but it's very yeah. it's very difficult to do the house. I'll tell you what you need to do for the house. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, for your real estate, you know they have mm -hmm. they that you know when you get your real estate taxed. Okay, yeah. you have to value your real estate. So you can't just say, my house is worth $500,000. My house is worth $1 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just can't come okay. up with a number out of the clear blue. So in other words, okay. the government gives you a real estate mm -hmm. tax and your real estate tax is based on what they say is your assessed value of your house. So you have to yeah. take the assessed value of the house from the government. You gotta go to your local clerk's office or county clerk's office or wherever it is, figure out, get something mm -hmm. that says, this is the assessed value of your property. OK, then you have to show if you have a mortgage or no mortgage. And if you have a mortgage, how much you owe. So let's say the assessed mm -hmm. value of your house is five hundred thousand dollars. I'm making it up. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I hope you live in a ten yeah. million dollar mansion. But let's say it's a five hundred thousand yeah. dollar house. OK. <laughs> um, all right. And, and you have a mortgage of hypothetically three hundred thousand you owe. So you have two hundred thousand mm -hmm. in equity in the house. You owe three hundred thousand. What you are allowed to okay. do is take the difference in in the mm -hmm. in in the in the in the equity that you have in the house, which is the two hundred thousand, but you have to be able to demonstrate all this. That's why you get the assessed value and you get any mortgage mm -hmm. and you show your mortgage payment and you take the difference. Mm -hmm. So now you have two hundred thousand dollars and you're allowed to take twenty percent of the equity that you have in the house and put mm -hmm. add it towards your income for the affidavit of support. So oh, let's okay. say you have two hundred thousand dollars in equity in the house that would give you 20% of 200,000, I think is 40,000 if my math is right. So you would add that to mm -hmm. the value. The house is okay. much easier. Uh, bank statements, money goes up and down all the time. So what you would have mm -hmm. to do is show literally three years of bank statements and then take- Three and, years? Yeah, because they're gonna say, <laughs> how do we know this is even your money? Okay, so oh, you, go, yeah. you gotta go three years of, uh, you know, I would suggest do three years of bank statements and show that money was there the whole entire time. Okay. Otherwise, uh, okay. they're not going to. Otherwise, they're not going to accept it. it. You know, the easiest thing in the world. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing in the world mm -hmm. is just go ask a friend to give a tax return and sign a piece of paper. But you can oh, do it either okay. way. But you can do it either way. Yeah, yeah okay. because uh, yeah, you know, I have a lawyer, and uh, the the secretary is telling me that I should do the house and right. um, do and do and do my bank account. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, the, it, they're short of like twelve hundred dollars. My it was short of twelve hundred dollars, so right. they're gonna multiply it by five. Right, I think she says. So if I have that, more than that in my no, account, well, well, it's by the same. Five. It's the same. It's the same. It's not the multiply by five. You get twenty percent of it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So, um, so, oh. so that's where that's where the five comes from. Twenty times five, I guess. But it's twenty percent of whatever oh, okay. the value yeah. is. All right, you get to so add if it's it. one thousand multiplied by five, it's like you know a couple of thousand. No, you no, know, you don't so multiply. You don't multiply times five the money you have in the bank. You you, oh. you get twenty percent of it. So if you have a thousand dollars in the bank, you mm -hmm. only get to mm -hmm. add two hundred dollars of that into whatever your income is. Oh, only two hundred dollars. So if I have suppose I have twenty thousand, how much I'm gonna they're gonna what's, add? What's twenty percent of like, twenty thousand? That would yeah, be 4, um, but you would have to uh, demonstrate. Okay. You can't just yeah. say I have twenty thousand dollars on on February fifteenth. Mm -hmm. You have to demonstrate that right. twenty thousand's been there for years. Oh, okay. You understand, oh, or they're okay. not going to accept it. Hold on, if you need help, okay? Right. We can help you. Hold on. One eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. That's the number to call. One eight hundred. 
529-5465. If you're shy like myself, you're too shy and you don't want to call and speak to me. I don't know why. I don't bite. I don't scratch. I don't claw. Uh, but if you're shy and you don't want to call 1-800-529-5465, you can always leave a message on Facebook, a comment on Facebook. And we have Belgium Kim. And Belgium Kim knows how to read English. And she's going to come on even though she's from Belgium. I think they read English in Belgium. No, they speak French, but she learned English because she grew up in North Carolina. And she's going to come on and read all of your questions to me. So if you're a little shy, uh, but I don't bite, I like to speak to you. Give us a call right now, 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Rob in Alexandra, Virginia. Rob. Hey, Brad. Hey, what's happening? Hey, it's funny that he, when you were saying it's uh, if, if, I, if anybody is shy, I almost hung up the phone. <laughs> what? Why'd you, why'd you almost hang the phone up? Oh, if you're shy. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> no, 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 you no, no, you're good. You're like, good. No, you're like, oh, I'm yeah. shy. <laughs> Click. All right. What's your question? Don't worry. You're cool. So I know it uh, probably it has been talked uh, in your show earlier, mm -hmm. uh, but like, uh, what's the ch what's the process for the people for getting a citizenship uh, who have a criminal convictions? What do you mean? What's the process? Like uh, uh, what, it's the same. What, all right. Well, to answer your question specifically, to become a citizen, it's the same process whether you have a criminal conviction or not. You do the N four hundred. You do the biometrics. You show up for an interview. Now it's really what's the law? Am I entitled to become a citizen if I have a criminal conviction? And my question my question back to you is. What's the conviction? Where was the conviction? When was the conviction? What was your punishment? And then I can tell you. Okay. Uh, so, yep. Yeah, so, uh, it was, I, I got convicted um, back 2016 for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I was in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, it was, I mean, you had a, you had a guest on your, on your um show his name was i don't know i forgot his name but he, he was a criminal defense lawyer right and uh, a lot of things that he uh, said in, in your show like resembled like you know um a lot of people uh plead guilty not knowing what was the consequences right. and then rep represented by a bad lawyer right so it happened to me and where did uh, this happen in what... virginia yes okay when did you get your conviction for domestic violence uh 2016 okay and when did you get your green card? I got my green card in 2011. And were you living in America prior to 2011 or you came to America mm, no. with your green card? I, I came to America in 2011. Okay, where are you from? I'm from, uh, um, well, Asia. Asia, okay. Yes. It's a big, big continent, Asia. Let's, yeah. you know, we don't need to narrow it down any more than that. And, um, <laughs> And my, my question to you is, what was your sentence when you pled guilty to this domestic violence? Did you go well, to jail? Um, Did you pay a fine? No, I, what happened? So, yeah, so my, when, when a lawyer my, uh, in court, uh, he um, came to me and he was like, okay, so if you plead the guilty, then you don't have to go to jail or you're um, like, you know, you don't have to go to trial, but you have to plead guilty and uh, that's all. So I plead guilty and then no jail, no, no jail time. Uh, Did you have to do community no, service? Did you have to no pay a fine? Service, no community service. No fine. Nothing. Do you know if you pled guilty to a misdemeanor or a felony? Uh, it was a misdemeanor. It was a misdemeanor. Well, this is the deal. Okay. Number one, you're not going to become a citizen anytime soon, unfortunately, because you mm -hmm. pled guilty to a domestic violence offense within the last five years. So you're not even going to even think about citizenship until five years from the time of the conviction, which would be 2021. And then you're gonna call me back uh, on my show. Hopefully there's still a show. Yeah. Up. All right, there should be. Uh, People like me, so there should <laughs> be. Um, you're gonna call me back on the show and you're gonna say, hey, I spoke to you three years ago. Am I ready to go? And then I'll let you know what the laws are at that point, because who knows what crazy Donald Trump is gonna do. But right now you gotta <laughs> wait until five years, 2021. Your other issue okay. is now, you know, this, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, expert in any stretch of the imagination on what the penal law of Virginia is. I will say yeah. this, okay? A domestic violence offense is a deportable offense no matter as soon as you plead guilty to it no matter what what um what you pled guilty to. Uh, yeah. on the other hand, an assault 
offense uh, mm -hmm. would only be guilty if it's something more than a petty offense. So in New York, a misdemeanor assault with no jail time would be considered a petty offense, a one time. I don't know in Virginia because I, I, I would have to read what the penal laws are. So it depends mm -hmm. on what is the penal law? Did you plead guilty to something that says you committed a, a, a crime of domestic violence? Did you commit a crime of assault, an attempted assault? Did you do something different? Did you, you know, plead guilty to a disorderly conduct? I don't know. So a lot mm -hmm. will depend on, first of all, you're not going to become a citizen, unfortunately, till 2021. Yet got bad advice from an attorney if you, you weren't told that. And you may want to mm -hmm. try to vacate that conviction. Uh, but number two, you know, I'm more concerned about did you plead guilty to something that would make you deportable? So what I would suggest to you is this, okay? And I'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to solve the problem uh, on the show because I need to do two things. I need to see your disposition and then I need to yes. see what the laws of Virginia are. And I can't do that legal research while I'm on a live show. So mm -hmm. what we do is going to put you on hold and I think you should have a consultation with us. Prior to the consultation, go down to the court get what's called a disposition, which is a letter from the court saying, this is what you're charged with, this is what you pled guilty to, and you're gonna email the uh, client service member who makes the appointment for you to speak with me. We can speak over the phone. We don't, you don't need to come to New York. You're gonna email mm -hmm. her the disposition, a copy of your green card, and then I'll do the research before the consultation. I'll get on the phone with you and I'll tell you exactly where you stand. All right, perfect. All right, hold on one second. All right. Well, if I can, this computer works. There we go. 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-529-5465. Please tell a friend to tell a friend, because if you can't tell a friend to tell a friend, then, uh, then what? Why? Why can't you tell a friend? I had no answer to that. Sometimes I talk and I don't have an answer to what I'm saying. If you can't tell a friend to tell a friend, then I don't know what the answer is. But you should, because there's a lot of people who need help here. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Lisa in Queens, New York. Lisa. Hi, good evening. Hey, how are you? I'm good. What's going I'm on? Trying to, um, I did my interview from um, November, and I still haven't heard from them. Interview for what? Um, um, for a green card. Okay, who's sponsoring you? My husband. And where was your interview? Um, Long Island. In, uh, in Holtzville, New York? Yeah. Okay. And when you did that interview, you said it was w what month in year? November. Okay. What happened? Last at the year. What happened at the interview? Tell me what happened. It was okay. He had just asked me some questions and everything was went well. And he said to me, um, I will receive the card within the next four to six weeks. He said you and were going to... haven't heard. He said you were going to... You were approved. Yeah. Okay. And he said, but you just have to do some background check. Okay. Which I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And up until now, I haven't heard nothing. Okay. Because maybe, I, maybe, I your, did, ba maybe did, your background check didn't clear you. I did call USCIS. And what they say? But and I and I did. Um, they sent me an email stating that they still verifying mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, so this is the story. Number one, when you call USCIS, you're calling an outside contractor. You ever call a bank mm -hmm. after hours and then you like speak to somebody in another okay, country? Okay, one minute. I don't call to you. You know what I did before too? I what? did call and they said to me, oh, they sent out a letter and I will receive the letter in 15 days. Up until now, I don't receive no letter. Mm. Okay, so and you don't know what is in that letter? No, okay. but then I received the email. All right, so this is the but story. Then I received. All right, all right. I don't mean to cut you off, but now I'm going to cut you off. Okay, so let me give you some answers. All right, so number one, what, just everyone has to understand, including you, Lisa, but everybody has to understand, when you call USCIS and the customer service number, you are not literally speaking to anybody who is an actual government worker. You're speaking to a contractor who is contracted out by the U.S. government to answer the phones for USCIS. You speak to nobody with power. You speak to nobody who has any inside information on your case. All they can see is that you have a pending case. It was approved. It was denied. Basically, they can see the same exact information as if you were to, uh, you know, you know, do the do the thing online where you put in your case number. So they have very yeah. limited information and they really don't do a lot for you other than give you an update. It's not like you call them and like, and they say, yes, I'm gonna get on this right away, you're gonna get an answer. They don't really do any of that stuff. So you gotta wait. 
You got to wait 120 days. This is kind of the Brad rule. Okay? It's, but it's you not, don't think 120 days is because it's from November the 7th? Well, I'm, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done answering. Okay. So you got to okay. wait a hundred, mm-hmm. you got to wait 120 days. If it's 120 days, which is four months from November 7th. So that's December, January, February, March. We're at 120 days. You're called right at the right time. You still haven't heard anything. This is when it's time to get an attorney involved. Okay. Because it's going to be one of three, one of three. Okay. I don't know the answer, but it's one of three. Either one, they don't believe it's a real marriage. They don't believe it's a real marriage. You're going to get a letter going back for a second interview. That hasn't that maybe that was the letter they were mailing. Maybe not. I don't know. Number two, your background checks have not cleared. There's a problem with your fingerprints. If that's the case, okay. you got to follow up on that. Or three, you just got a lazy officer who said he was going to approve you and just put your file aside and never did anything. It's one of those three. Okay. I don't know the answer. So that's why you get a lawyer and we'll start harassing immigration and try to get an answer for you. All right, but calling up the 1-800 number is not going to solve your problem. It's not doing anything. It's not making, it's not making, it's not greasing the wheel to move, move things forward, if you understand. Okay, but I did make an um, appointment to see you next week. Fantastic. So then we will see you next week. If you get your green card okay. before that, cancel it. Okay. All right, hold on one second. All right. You're welcome. I did make the appointment already. I know. Oh, okay, fine. All right, so then we'll see you tomorrow. I mean, whatever. Okay. Next week, next month, yeah, whatever. Thanks. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. Let's go. It's a computer problem here. Beverly in Queens, New York. Also, two queens in a row. Hello, Beverly. What's Hello? up? Hello. How are you? Okay, I did a petition for my son from two thousand and ten. Uh huh. He got approved and everything. Last year they sent for him for me to do the last stage, but he has been here from two thousand and fourteen. So they keep telling me that if he go back home. To collect his paperwork, they're gonna bar him from coming back. That is very true. Okay, but Who's I got they, a, by I the got, way. Hmm? Who is they? Lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. Okay. Lawyers. Has they, the lawyers, ever heard to, told you the term provisional waiver? Yeah, they did tell me about that. Okay, so that's what needs to happen. But, he needs to do a provisional waiver. If he goes home, you he's been eligible for you filed for him in two thousand ten. He's been eligible for his green card. For well over a year now, okay. Yeah, he has been. It's been over from last year to say that He's I should. Eligible, but the only thing is, yeah, I know. I got everything, but the only thing I I the extenuated that I could adjust is that he could adjust his status. He can't. I don't know. Okay, he so can't. This, no. All right. Let me ask. Let me. Let me. Let me stop. I'm gonna have to cut you off. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna help you right now. Okay. Number one. Okay. Okay. If he's over 21, correct? Mm-hmm. But when 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 everything started, he was under twenty one. He didn't. When were he you, gets were, were you a citizen before he was twenty one years old? No. Oh, yes or no? No. Okay. All right. So he's not an immediate relative. Okay. You became a citizen after twenty one. So that doesn't. And you could only adjust as an immediate relative. How did you get your green card? My son. Okay. So your son filed for you. You were an immediate relative of your son. That does not make mm-hmm. your other child 245i, so he doesn't get the opportunity to pay the penalty fee. So right now, I mean, we could go further and further to dig in to see whether it's 245i or not, but right now, it looks like no 245i, you can't pay the penalty fee. What country is your son from? We're from Jamaica. Okay, so he's but, from Jamaica. Let me finish, let me finish. Okay. No, let me just tell you this. Um, whenever, when, when I got the paper and approved and everything, they say that if he was going to turn 21 in a couple months, I should let them know, which I did. Beverly, Beverly, mm-hmm. I understand everything you're saying to me, okay? Okay. Now you have to let me help you, okay? All right, All right let me help you, okay? Let okay. me put your mind mm-hmm. at ease. I get it, okay? You <laughs> okay. filed mm-hmm. for your son. You filed mm-hmm. for him before he was 21. You became mm-hmm. a citizen after he was 21, so it, that's all that matters. Once you became okay. a citizen after 21, whether you notified them or not that he was turning 21 is irrelevant. This is the law. If you were a citizen before he was 21, he gets his green card here. If you were a citizen okay. after he's 21, he's got to go home. No ands okay. or buts about it. Now, I want to okay. put you at ease a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So it is correct. Your first statement. When you first got on the phone, you said, 
I was told if my son goes home, he can't come back. And the answer mm -hmm. is correct. He can't okay. come back because he has violated immigration laws. He has overstayed his welcome here in America. He is out of status. He's illegal. He's undocumented. Whatever word you want to use, he has overstayed his welcome here in America. And, and, the, mm -hmm. and, the, and the penalty for overstaying your welcome in America is if you leave America for any reason, whether it's to get your green card, you want to travel home, somebody's ill, you can't come back for a decade. Okay, 10 years. Okay. We don't want, mm -hmm. but hear me out, okay? I want you to understand. Yeah, we, don't, understand. we don't want your son to go home and stay home for a decade. Okay, mm -mm. The, now when he goes to the U.S. Embassy, he doesn't have a criminal record, I assume, correct? No, Okay, no. and he's never done anything else bad with immigration. He's never lied to the government. He doesn't no, do drugs. He, he he's never a good, goes he's to He's a good them. boy, good boy. So the and only- he got two kids here too. Perfect. So now the only reason when he goes back to pick up his green card, the only, he has one reason and one reason only why they would not give him his green card. He lived mm -hmm. here illegally. He was undocumented. He, would, he overstayed his welcome. If okay. you do what's called a provisional waiver, and that is done while you are here in the United States, if you mm -hmm. do a provisional waiver here, they will, the waiver, what people say, what is a waiver? It means we're going to overlook, we are going to overlook whatever we are waiving. So the provisional waiver says we're going to overlook the fact that you lived here illegally, you were undocumented, you worked here illegally. So we're gonna overlook it. So if you get that waiver and you go home to pick up your green card at the US Embassy, the officer can, is going to overlook the fact that you were undocumented, you worked here illegally, you stayed here illegally, okay? They can't use that against him, okay? So, okay. so now the only way that he could be denied is he has a criminal record, he has drugs in his system, he's lied to the government, you're not his mom, period, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So if, as long mm -hmm. as we're good on all of those other four fronts, no criminal record, mm -hmm. he's never lied to the government, you're his mom, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and obviously give it a good affidavit of support, then he gets his green card in two weeks and comes back. I will tell you, I know for a fact, and although prior successful results don't guarantee a similar outcome, but I'm gonna tell you, every person that we have sent home from my law office with a provisional waiver has returned within okay. weeks. Okay, that's what he okay. needs to do, hold on. Okay, because other than that, he's going to mm -hmm. sit. It is so much better to do the provisional waiver than sit here in the United States of Donald Trump illegal and wait for immigration to come knock on your door. He can get his green card right, in yes, this, and there's I'm a way ready. to do it. There's a way to do it. Hold on. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. One one eight hundred. You're very welcome, by the way, Beverly. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five one eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. This is what we're going to do. Uh. We're gonna to go to Mario in Fort Lauderdale, Omar in Brooklyn, and then we're gonna find Belgium Kim in our social media room and see what people have to say, comments, questions, issues, problems on our Facebook uh, feeds at the Bradshaw Live. Let's go to Mario in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mario. Hi, how you doing, sir? Fabulous. Um, I am calling because I am an international student. Mm -hmm. I am on an F1 visa and I recently got married to my, um, to my wife. Right. Uh, but she's a, she's a U.S. Uh, resident, not a citizen. So I was wondering um, if we should go ahead or if she should go ahead and put through the paperwork, would that be a problem? Okay. Would I lose my status as a student and you, all that? You wouldn't lose your status as a student. The problem is going to be if you need to renew your status that could be a problem. And the reason is this, is like, let's say, how many years left do you have of school? Uh, two. Okay, fine. So then I would suggest your wife file for you because you got two years left and then after two years left, you, then you get optional practical training for a third year, okay? So you wouldn't yeah. need to do anything with your, as long as you stay in school, you wouldn't need to do yeah. anything in terms of applying for a new visa status for at least three years from today. When you apply for a new okay. visa status, part of the application process is saying, you know what, I have this non-immigrant intent. At the end of my visa status, I'm gonna go home. But you can't show yeah. that if your wife has filed for you, you've shown an intent to get a green card. The reason you yeah. won't have a problem is it's only an 18 month wait if your wife files for you right now. So if she files for you, uh -huh. you're gonna get your green card well before you have to change your status to some other status or renew, get, go to another degree program. 
So I would, you understand? Yeah. Um, okay, so let your wife file the I-130. It'll take about 18 months and you'll get your green card. It's not going to affect you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Where are you from? All right, man. Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay, hold on one second, all right? We can help you if you want. Thanks. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Omar in Brooklyn. Omar. Good night, uh, Mr. Hey. Bernstein. What's up? All right, so I um, quick question. I have a few of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have a... Five 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 one. I'm from Jamaica. Also, mm -hmm. um, I've been married uh, three years. Right. This June will make three years. Right. Um, me and my wife, we not living together no more. But when I came from Jamaica, I was living with her. But we got into an argument, which resulted into a domestic violence case against who? And um, she's trying for me to get deported. Okay. However, I was told that your services are good and we're you know, just following that guy. Okay, say, so let me, let me, let me ask keep you. up the good work. Uh, thank you. I don't want to ask, if, if you have a current pending case, I don't want to ask anything about it and I don't want you to say anything, okay? Okay, okay, but, understandable. But, understandable. but, okay, but, uh, I just want to ask an immigration question, okay? I don't want to talk about the no domestic problem, violence. No problem. Okay. Yeah, no, no problem. Go ahead. How, how many years were you married when you entered the United States of America? Um, I was actually married just one year. So okay, just fine. One year so you have a conditional, so you only have a two-year conditional green card. Correct, correct, okay. correct. Okay, right. Correct, and correct. now, I don't know what happened in, in, you know, your situation. You know, the, you know, when the police are called, certainly in New York City, when the police are called to a domestic situation, somebody's, well, it's, it's, somebody's... It's not, it's not New York, it's uh, over on the west side, Oakland side. I'm sorry? Oh, okay, on Oakland it, side. Okay. But at least, I don't know what the deal is in California, but I know in New York, just... For everybody to know if the police are called someone's getting arrested okay that's just, right, right, I, right. And, and it's maybe the same in california as well now what right, what exactly. the, what 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 the issue is is this you know good you know she can't you know she may say you know i'm going to take the assumption you're a good guy and and you're completely innocent okay um right. i don't know whether that's true or not you see okay but i'm just going to take that assumption okay all right okay. you seem like okay. you are okay so um, the only way she's going to get you deported is to have you found guilty of a crime. Because if she writes to immigration and say, this guy Omar, he married me. It was a BS marriage. He did it just to get his green card. You're going to file to remove the conditions of your permanent residence. You're going to prove you lived with her and immigration is going to take your side every day. OK, because they're just going to say the U.S. citizen is, is calling sour grapes. Now, if you want to get you deported, you're found guilty of a crime. She pressures charges against you. You're found guilty of domestic violence. That's a deportable offense. You're done. Right. You understand? So right. hold so, on. Um, so I don't I... want you to talk about it. I'm just telling you what the deal is. Okay. So okay, you, have, okay. you, have two, you have two issues. One, you've got to remove the conditions, which means you're going to end up getting divorced from her. File on your own. Prove it was a real marriage. That's not an issue, presumably. And then you got to be found innocent of domestic violence because if you're found guilty, you're going to get deported. All right? Right, right. All right, hold on one second. Hold on, we can help. Jonathan. Hi, uh, yes. My question is probably a little bit more complicated. Okay. Um, I was arrested a while back. I went to prison for two felonies. I, got, I went in front of an immigration judge. The immigration judge gave me back my green card. Great. So I had it for 10 years. I am recent, just recently, I had to reapply for it to um, right. update it. My question is, could they take it away from me now? No. I haven't done nothing. You got, you got, you got, no, 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 no. Once you get a waiver from a judge, from the time of Adam and Eve, and by the way, we have to, somebody's typing. In the, is that you typing in the background? Who's typing in the background? Not me. Somebody's typing in the background, or is it just my imagination? Okay. From, no, not me. From, no, no. Okay. All right. When you go to a judge, okay, you get a waiver from that judge from the time of Adam, Adam and Eve which is the first people ever to walk the face of the earth, all the way up to the day the judge gave you that waiver, every crime you've ever done from the beginning of time to that day, you are waived for life. Anything you oh, do, you. anything you do after that, different story. Okay? So as thank long you as so you much. as long as you're you know, go renew your green card, you have no problem. Thank you so much. Right. I've been bothering. I've, I've been waiting, and I'm waiting. Thank you so much. No, 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 no. You have You're a good. good day. You're good. Thank you. All right. right. Made that guy's day. 1-800-529-54. This can't be right. Sam from the Bronx? Come on! Sam! Sam! 
Yeah. A different Sam. Okay, I thought this was a different Sam. Sam, I thought this was the groundhog that was going to come on. All right, Sam, what's up? Hey, how you doing? God know you. What's going on? Yeah, everything's good. I just have two questions. I just want to ask you, why, uh, they can, what's the problem they can deny your citizenship? What, why can they deny your citizenship? Yeah. Oh, there's like a hundred reasons why. Tell me what your situation is, and then I'll tell you if there's a problem. No, I've never been in prison. I never do nothing bad. So. All right. So you know how to read, write, and speak English? Yeah, yeah. I do the text. I I pass everything. Okay. So let me ask you these questions, okay? And then I'll tell you whether you're eligible to become a citizen. You know how to read? All right. You understand the words coming out of my mouth? That was from. You said what? I said, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? You understand English? You never saw that movie with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker? Rush Hour? No, 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 no. no you never no, saw no, that I movie? It was a great movie. Jack- no, no. Okay, so Jackie Chan's this, you know, guy from China, and he's making pretend he doesn't speak any English, and Chris Tucker's yelling, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Like, for the first 10 minutes of the movie, and then finally Jackie Chan says, yes, I understand English. So I was making a joke. So you understand English, right? So you know how to yeah. read and write English. Uh, yeah. You've had a green card for how long? For five years. Seven years. Seven years. You pay your taxes yeah. every year? Yeah. You owe child support to anybody? No. Okay. Uh, you, and you and you and you and I asked you. You pay your taxes, right? Yeah. And you filed them. You're yeah, eligible. Okay. You're eligible to become a citizen. You should have no problem. Have you been out of the country for more than six months at any time? No. Okay. You're eligible to become a citizen. You have no problem. There's no reason to deny you. There's no reason. No reason that I'm aware of. Okay. I have another question. Last uh, last year, my wife she passed a citizenship. She naturalized. She have a citizenship now. Mm-hmm. So uh, last time when I went to my citizenship, they put in my finger in the computer, and then I asked my wife. She said she, they don't put her finger in the computer. I don't understand what you mean by put a finger in a computer. Like, like Why would anybody put a finger in a computer? You're talking about taking a fingerprint? I'm not sure what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, t- taking a fingerprint. Yeah, so, yes, what, is, so, what, is, so what, what is the question? Yeah, I want to know if it is normal, because my wife told me she don't put her... Uh, yes, she did. In. Everybody does. Everybody has, to, everybody has to take a fingerprint. So that's not true. Uh, Guarantee your wife took a fingerprint. Guaranteed. No, 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 no. In, in the office, in the uh, examination, the examination lady took her finger. She put her on her right side, one finger... Okay, so they were they were checking they were they were they were checking to see it was her. Hold hold on one second. Are you doing your citizenship now? Yeah. Okay, hold on. If you need help, hold on one second. All right, Carla in Chicago, Illinois. Carla. Hi. Good evening. How How are you? you? How you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing good. It's very cold, so I don't want to be. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay. I'm I'm warm inside. Are you inside or you're outside? (laughs) No, 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 no. I'm outside. Okay. All right. So let's go quickly then because you want to get back in. Okay. All right. So I came to the country in 1997. Mm-hmm. Um, I came legally. Um, so I lost my I-94. Um, I paid an attorney to try to have it um, replaced right. last December um, 2017, uh, 2016. So it's been from December until it's been well, about did you a do, year. You did an I-102? Is that what you did? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. I need to have it replaced. Right. Um, do you have the pa- do you have, Let me ask you a question. Do you have the passport uh-huh. that you came in on? No, I lost the you passport lost that as well. along. Yeah, okay. uh, unfortunately, I it was um, it was stolen when I was in, in in the process of moving. Right. I got my I got my passport replaced, but um, like I said, I paid um in 2016 in December. It was December 10th to be exact. So it's been a year and three months. Unfortunately, I cannot locate the attorney that I paid the fee to, oh um, that gosh. I hired. So you have no um, idea what happened to this? So, you know, she's around. It's just that she never answers her email. She never answers her the phone. The attorney doesn't stop. answer her phones. All right. So, so okay. you're in Chicago. I'm in New York. This is what we do. Stay on hold. Okay. okay? I know it's cold. Okay? I, I, okay? And make an appointment, and we'll get you the replacement I-94. Don't worry. I, Thank you, you. You always know where to find me. You want to know why? Because I'm live every day, 5.30 to 7.30. You know exactly where to find me. I know. I have you me. on Facebook. Thank you. Hold I on. have you on Facebook, Yeah, you too. always know where I am, right here on Facebook, 5.30 to 7.30. Hold on. 
1-800-529-5465. We're also opening up our lines right now if you have immigration questions, 1-800-529-5465. And also in a few minutes, we're going to get back to Kimmy Kim 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 from Belgium, from North Carolina, and now currently living in Harlem, New York to have the rest of your immigration questions asked and answered. But right now we're taking your calls at 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Chris, who is this? Christella, Christella in Orange County, California. Christella. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. What's happening? Uh, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Please, um, I, I have a sister in the United States, uh -huh. so she's a U.S. citizen. Uh -huh. I don't know if she can file for me while I'm in the U.S. and while I'm out of status. The answer is yes, she can file for you, and she should if that's all you've got going for you. The downside is oh. you're going to wait. The downside is you're going to wait over a decade for a green card, but that doesn't mean she oh. shouldn't do it because just because your sister files for you doesn't mean. You can't take advantage of some other laws that come down the line. Maybe you fall in love down the line. Who knows? But do something rather than nothing. Okay. The other issue, okay. you, the other issue you don't know, which which will be, is what will the laws be ten years from today? Will you be able to get your green card in America? Will you have to go home? If you go home, will you be able to come back? We have no idea. I'm, I'm not a fortune teller. All I can tell oh. you is to answer your question. Uh, should I have my sister file for me if I'm out of status or should I do nothing? The answer oh, to that oh. question all the time is let your sister file for you. It's going to be a long wait. That doesn't mean that's solving your immigration problem, but at least you're trying to. OK, and that doesn't oh. mean. And then, you know, I've heard people say and I'm going to let you comment in a second. And I've heard people say, well, I don't want my sister to file for me. I don't want my brother to file for me because it's going to take too long. OK, but what they're not oh. thinking is this. Yes, it's going to take long, and most likely you'll get your green card some other way, but it's better to do that than nothing. And just because your sister or brother files for you doesn't mean you can't have a second, third, or fourth immigration case that'll go faster down the line or simultaneously. Okay. Okay. So um, does it mean I have to go back to my country, or can I say in the USA why she filed for me? Well, well, the fact, it, the fact that your sister files for you doesn't make you legal to stay in the United States. It doesn't change your status. You're still out of status. OK, it doesn't make you okay. less deportable. It doesn't do anything for you other than it puts you on a waiting list for a green card well down the line. What will happen? Okay. I don't know, but it's still better than nothing. But it doesn't make okay. you legal. OK, OK. Right. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Alice in Houston, Texas. Alice. Alice, yes. excuse me. Good evening, sir. I um. I came to the United States in 2016 and got married. However, he didn't file no paperwork for me. For one, when we when I was about to file the paperwork, he found out that one of his divorce came back inconclusive. However, he finalized that divorce. Are we legally married? No. Or should no. we do we you have to get remarry? Got to remarry because it's a void marriage. You can't be married to two women at the same time. So Even he, though he finalized the divorce. He, yes, because it, what happened first was he married you. OK, and then got divorced, whether it was a week later or a month later. At some point, you were not free to he was not free to marry you. So you have to remarry again. Your first marriage, you are considered not married. OK, and under what circumstances? OK, because I'm, I'm not I'm not breaking any law or anything. No, but um, during the time that we were living together, he was abusive and I had to move out and leave him. No, he's threatened because I left. OK, so now let me let me tell you this. OK. If you are in an abusive marriage and you are in a bigamist marriage, meaning your husband was married to more than one person, but you believed, you believed at the time of marriage that it was not a bigamist marriage, which is what basically you're telling me, you are still- That was what he told right, me because right, I was because following what he You said. follow what he's telling you, then, then, then you are still free to file a VAWA application, an abuse case. So you can still do it. Okay. All right, so we can help you. So hold the okay. point is, hold on. So, so to answer your question, if it was your husband who was going to file for you, you would need to remarry. If it's, there was abuse while you were in a bigamous marriage, meaning your husband right. wasn't free to marry you because he was married to someone else, but you truly believed in your heart that he was free to marry you because that's what he told right. you, and then there was abuse, you still can file an abuse case. Okay. Sir. So hold on one second. We can help. 1-800-529-5465. Doreen in South Jersey, 
New Jersey. Hello. How are you? Yes. I am doing great, Brad. What's going on? I I am calling on the behalf of somebody. Mm-hmm. This person filed for a citizenship, right? Um, he went in two times, and I guess he forgot some papers, and they they give him. They said that they would send out um, appointment day in the mail. Right. Over a month now. When he called back, they, they said that they mailed it out. And he keep calling, calling. Just as last week, they told him that he should have received that letter already. Mm-hmm. So he was supposed and to get a letter in the mail when? When was it supposedly mailed out? They, I think it, it, it mailed out over a month. And he hasn't over gotten anything? Month. What was in that letter? He what, was he, what was he expecting in that letter? It was an appointment date. Okay. So then he needs to go down to immigration and find out when that appointment date is. Where is he? And is this appointment well, supposed to be where? Well, I'm not sure exactly. But what I'm saying, Brad, is that um, he went in two times already. He do his finger, fingerprint, that is to my understanding. Okay. He went, he went in and he do uh, the question. You know, they give you that question, whatever, whatever, they ask you, and you done all of that. But you didn't take in some papers, and they, they uh, give him a next appointment date. But anyway, um, as I'm saying that... Doreen, this is what I understand so far. Not a lot. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So um, I understand he had an appointment. Okay. Uh-huh. He showed up. Uh-huh. They asked him some things. He was missing documents. They, right. And he was supposed to get a letter saying, you know, and he brought in those documents and then they mailed him a letter and he didn't get it. And it's right. basically, basically, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. OK, it's, so so what you do at that point is and when you come into that situation where you're like, my head is spinning in circles. I don't know what the hell's going on. Now is the time to come see Brad or one of my my attorneys here and let us get in touch with immigration and find out what's going on and straighten out this mess. I, it yes, sounds messy. I already make an appointment for him. Perfect. 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 Hold on.